were eating good in the 2000s. Like, excuse my boomerisms for the duration, people, but when I say those were the days, those were the freaking days, bro. Back then, men were men, women were below legal age, and cell shaded animation was still kicking it like it was going out of style. Mostly because it was. Nowadays, boys are men, the women are damaged goods on Twitter, and we replace the grain with bad background CGI. On a good day. Mecha especially was on its zenith back then, always up for trying something new. We had reboots of time-honored classics, some new faces, trailblazers of the genre, underrated gems, signs that God exists, and he has a shit sense of humor. You want a show where your mecha is on a corporate budget? You got it. You want a fancy steampunk isekai? Well, I think Tomino did that in like the 70s or something, but fuck it. Let's add some clamp shit in Yoko Kano. Want a mecha show where the pilots have a, uh, Come to Jesus moment whenever they suit up. Well, I'd ask if you were on a list or something, but we got that too. Want Gunbuster but bad? Fuck you. Whether you were Sunrise's cash cow of the month or a director's fever dream, at that time, anything goes and everything did. The genre just couldn't get any bigger, and almost every entry always tried something new, or at least do a different version of what already happened. Which brings us to Full Metal Panic. It's based on a light novel series created by Shoji Gato, dope name by the way, the first season of which aired in 2002. This spawned a few noteworthy sequels including one that came out in 2018 in fact. To the sound of everyone but me and Arcata not giving a shit. The point is, it was quite the popular story, and like all great stories they start with one simple thing. Terrorism! Okay, there's a bit more to it than that. In baby terms, the story is set in- Wait, hold on a sec. Wait, what do you- what- what do you mean reality? Yeah, aside from all the mechs and crap, it's basically our world, but don't- don't worry about it, it doesn't matter. Anyways, there are these people called the Whispered. Young people who have knowledge of maths and sciences that would turn Silicon Valley into fucking Skynet. Why? Because shut up. Hence, the terrorism. See, we got there. Yeah, some no good douchebags and even the KGB want to bag these kids to create weapons of mass destruction. Go figure, right? To counter all this, we got the international mercenary group Mithril, headed by a teenage hush hush person. Because of course they are. Anyway, it seems these terrorist groups start operating in Japan. Because of course they are. So to protect a teenage girl named Kaname Chidori, who better to infiltrate her school and act as her bodyguard than this asshole? <laughs> so I scared you, huh? Let's try to keep the halls quiet. Oh, sorry. Huh? Okay, look, these school shootings make sense in context. Mission failed. We'll get them next time. Yep, in between all the plot shit, the bulk of this show's push comes from the huge focus on comedy. Taking military tropes and dropping them into a high school setting. The cause of these antics is our main man, Sosuke Sagra, who's basically writing from MGS2 if that simulation the prologue was his whole life. And no one told him what a condom was for. Oh, please, don't you even try to play innocent, you dirty old man. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, sure, I've used it a couple of times. <laughs> I was on mission deep in the jungle when I lost everything. Everything but this. You know they can hold a liter of water, right? Saying this guy is socially inept is like saying Amber Heard kind of shit the bed on her marriage. You're putting it pretty lightly. Sosuke, through dealing with the trauma as a child soldier, only knows the life of a mercenary and is committed to his job. He's a specialist, after all. So in an effort to protect Konami as much as possible, he, uh... Yeah, my man goes a little overboard. 
It's an interesting way of flopping a certain trope that kinda showed up around the early 2000s for Mecha Pro Tags, the stoic child soldier archetype, which is an inherently ridiculous concept on its own. So going full Cody Banks with it for laughs makes good joke potential, especially with Kaname acting as the straight man Sorry, straight woman, which is another interesting twist since instead of the usual baka baka bullshit abuse in most anime, Kaname is rightfully pissed at Sosuke for turning her school into fucking Columbine. So now that I've explained the GI joke to you people, Eat my wife's name out your fucking what do I think about it? Honestly, it's pretty fucking hilarious. I at least chuckled at more than half of the jokes this show had to offer, helped by a mostly pretty good dub. There are a couple of main comedy episodes that I would say don't do it for me, but most are largely inoffensive. The characters are fun, the animation is great in most of the comedy scenes, but so-so on the mech fights. And speaking of the mechs, I like the industrial and more low-key feel with most of them. Awesome real mech type stuff. But with all the greatest things in the world, they always have to have a butt. You see, in between all the mechs, the jokes, the school shootings, and fan service, lies a love story between the two main leads. Because, yeah, no duh. But as cute as their dynamic can be, when it comes to Sosuke and Kaname, I don't believe the show does enough to sell it to me. Mostly because after the first major arc of the show, where Sosuke reveals he's an actual soldier, it barely feels like most has progressed naturally. The first few episodes of the show do a great job building up that reveal and the dynamic, but after a while, it starts to feel like SNL skit reruns. Modern SNL skit reruns. Bruh, seriously? I'm so pressed right now, bro. <laughs> Yo, if this doctor keeps leaving us on red, he's gonna catch hands on gang. Sosuke, despite wanting to protect Kaname and keep his cover, kinda blows it every chance he gets. Yeah, smart move, Tessa. And Kaname bores on insufferable at times or lacking some sense of self-preservation. And you! You've been smirking over there in the corner for a while now and it's really starting to get on my nerves, okay? Give it up, you're not cute. I'd like to see your parents' faces right now. I'll bet they spoiled you rotten. Huh, are you angry now? Are you gonna say, you better not talk bad about my mommy? I don't have a mother. Oh. Imagine that. Give me a break. Look, it doesn't matter whether your mom is dead or just a deadbeat. The end result is the same. You're still a spoiled brat. And chances are that's all you'll ever be. <laughs> The former would work a lot more if the show was just full-on comedy, but the show clearly wants to take some parts of it seriously. So you kind of have this disconnect going on. And then the latter, it's just... Yeah, it's, it's stupid no matter how you slice it. Also, she gets weirdly possessive and attracted to Sosuke in a way that just feels really rushed. I mean, they even pulled the tsundere crap within the first three episodes. Come on, Pete. How do we fix this? First order of business, the first seven episodes keep them the exact same, columbines and all, just take out all the tsundere BS, we don't mean it, not yet. Afterwards, have them find some common ground and become semi-friends. We can still have Sosuke overreact and cause mishaps to protect Kaname, and the latter just beats the shit out of the former or calls him stupid, whatever, whatever. But keep it low-key and actually have him learn a bit more about regular life, albeit slow. And hell, have Kaname be curious as to how a kid her age would grow up to be like this a little sooner using his friends Kurtz and Mao to further facilitate this. That way, they both can gain common ground, and their attraction to each other would make later events even more phenomenal. Especially if they're more affected by the major story events, which are mostly good aside from featuring the main bad Gar in, in almost every single one. Don't get me wrong, I like him as a villain, and I love his charisma. He's having a 
damn good time, especially in the dub. But my god, he has more Jesus moments than Kira Yamato. Wait a second. First season of which aired in 2002. Hold up. God damn it. But yeah, have them only show up in the first and last arcs of the show. Now, what about the other characters? Well, there aren't really any ones worth noting, but here's the th main three ones. Tessa's charming in her own right and honestly could be a much better match for Sosuke, but whatever. Mao is the actual best girl in the show, and then there's Kurtz Weber. Oh, Kurtz, Kurtz Weber. So, uh, here, here's the deal with this guy, alright? He is a young, brash, flirtatious pervert, and in the dub, he's voiced by Vicolus Mignonicus. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, look, before I get into the- before I get any further with this, this isn't me taking any side in regards to the whole kick Vic debate, whatever. I am keeping all of that shit to my damn self. And this isn't me indicting the guy for doing his job saying these lines. In fact, these are pretty much the same as in the sub anyways. Weird sus ass voice acting is not proof that somebody did anything wrong. Or else I would have some really harsh words to say about Michael McConaughey. Hakufu Sonsaku succeeded his father Bundai Songken. But who cares about this ancient Chinese history when you've got a bathtub with a naked girl with some major booby bombs? Now that's entertainment! Booby bombs! Booby bombs! Booby bombs! Bo that said, with these clips, holy fuck, cow milk ages better than this. Konami Chiri. This is gonna be one foxy lady in a few years. The photo is four years old. Miss Chittery is 16 now. Oh, where can I get a photo of that version? Oh! Ew! Ew! What the fuck? It appears our angel has low blood pressure and doesn't do well in the morning, don't you think? What's that? <laughs> Yes, a high school girl taking a morning shower. What did you say, nigga? I'm a lot of help. I can't move a damn muscle now that you really need me to. True, you've already done so much for me. Shit, if only I had a little bit more energy left. If I could just... Ah! Why? 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 Some more training, but love. I don't like where this is going. I need the warmth of someone close to me. Wait! No, 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 no! Sergeant Major, please let me cry on your chest. I'm bearing my soul to you. Please bear. Your body. Stop! 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 You asshole! So yeah, that's full male panic. Not bad. Then again, the mech spikes are kinda so-so, so 2 out of 10. <laughs>